My name is Tania Spinoza Bonilla. I am the Art Across Curriculum Educator at the Hagerty Museum of Art, and I'm joined by Christine Fleming, who is the Manager of Community Engagement. I will say right away, Christine has a new beautiful puppy named Alma, and they are in the stages of like acclimating her. Oh, there she is. Um, so Christine will stay kind of in the background for today. Um, some of her sections are pre-recorded, but you'll still see her around. Um, just wanted to say that. Um, I also wanted to mention that this is a live and recorded event, so feel free to turn your cameras on or off, whatever you feel comfortable with. And we do ask that you stay muted for certain sections of the event, but we will make sure to like flag for you whenever we are totally okay with you responding to some of our questions and open it up for you to unmute yourselves. Um, the chat is always open for all of you to add comments, your feedback, your um, observations, whatever you have to share, we want to hear it. So feel free to use the chat throughout the entire event. Um, we can go to the next slide. So we are going to just start off our event with a land acknowledgement. So during each session, we have featured different land acknowledgement. Today, we feature the statement of UW-Milwaukee um, their American Indian studies. So it goes as following. We acknowledge in Milwaukee that we are on traditional Potawatomi, Ho-Chunk and Menominee homeland along the Southwest shores of Michigami, North America's largest system of freshwater lakes where the Milwaukee, Menominee and Kinnikinick rivers meet and the people of Wisconsin sovereign Anishinaabe, Ho-Chunk, Menominee, Oneida and Mohican nations remain present. So we would like to, to please drop in the chat where you are tuning in from and take a moment to acknowledge the place you live in and its historical inhabitants and be thankful for those that called your location home and cared for it before you. So let's take a moment to do that. Lots of Milwaukee folks, see? We got someone from Whitefish Bay, Kennesaw, Georgia, New Berlin. Awesome, South Florida. Awesome, thank you so much everyone for sharing that. All right, I think we can go to our next slide. Oh, and someone else is tuning in from the east side. Okay, thank you. So today's event is going to be focused mostly on attunement. So we know that that's not necessarily a common concept or theme that is talked about. So we wanted to start off with what is attunement? What, why are we focusing on this? So if we go to the next slide, please, um, I'll explain it briefly. So the, the technical um, description of attunement is the reactiveness we have to another person, it is the process by which we form relationships. So, so really it's the, the interaction that we have with others and how we go about that and how we perceive that. So sometimes when we meet someone and we have really good conversation and we're just, you know, um, we just instantly feel like we can talk more with them. We, we often say we click so well, that's attuning well to someone, right? So when we are able to attune well with individuals around us, we can be many things. We can be empathic, we can work and live in harmony, we can be more willing to work together to solve problems and achieve great things. And attunement, I, I like to see it as this array of different concepts put together that need to be put in practice so that we are able to attune with others. So I see it as us practicing empathy, friendship, kindness, communication, and synchronicity and agreement. Um, so if we go to the next slide, I also like to see it as like, what is um, attunement not? <laughs> so let's go to the next slide. So I like, to, I like this little um, <laughs> animation of what's the opposite of attunement? 
Attunement is not discord. It is not disharmony. It's not clashing with someone or fighting or disproportioning things. It's not imbalance. It's not disagreement. It's not jangling, right? It's not um, purposefully not working with people. It is actually going out of your way to try to see the other person's side so that we can work together. It's a little bit um, counterintuitive in some ways, but it is ultimately what helps us um, live amongst others. We are a social race, right? We are, um, the human race is, is a social group, so we need to work well with others. So I thought that um, a perfect way to talk about attunement was to focus on empathy versus sympathy and how those two can look very differently because um, attunement does encompass a lot of empathy in it. So I'm gonna show a little video by Brene Brown, which I know is you know hit or miss for some people. I personally really like her and her work. Um, so we're just gonna watch that now. If we can press play. So what is empathy and why is it very different than sympathy? Empathy fuels connection. Sympathy drives disconnection. Empathy, it's very interesting. Teresa Wiseman is a nursing scholar who studied professions, very diverse professions where empathy is relevant and came up with four qualities of empathy. Perspective taking, the ability to take the perspective of another person or, or recognize their perspective as their truth. Staying out of judgment, not easy when you enjoy it as much as most of us do. <laughs> Recognizing emotion in other people and then communicating that. Empathy is feeling with people. And to me, I always think of empathy as this kind of sacred space when someone's kind of in a deep hole and they shout out from the bottom and they say, I'm stuck, it's dark, I'm overwhelmed. And then we look and we say, hey, and climb down. I know what it's like down here, and you're not alone. Sympathy is, ooh, <laughs> it's bad, uh-huh. <laughs> uh, no, you want a sandwich? <laughs> um, empathy is a choice, and it's a vulnerable choice, because in order to connect with you, I have to connect with something in myself that knows that feeling. Rarely, if ever, does an empathic response begin with at least. I had a, yeah. And we do it all the time. Because you know what? Someone just shared something with us that's incredibly painful, and we're trying to silver lining it. I don't think that's a verb, but I'm using it as one. We're trying to put the silver lining around it. So I had a miscarriage. Oh, at least you know you can get pregnant. I think my marriage is falling apart. At least you have a marriage. <laughs> John's getting kicked out of school. At least Sarah is an A student. But one of the things we do sometimes in the face of very difficult conversations is we try to make things better. If I share something with you that's very difficult, I'd rather you say, I don't even know what to say right now. I'm just so glad you told me. Because the truth is, rarely can a response make something better. What makes something better is connection. Yeah, so that, that's, oh, it's going again. Can we pause that real quick? Thank you. I just thought that was a, a good example of, you know, how can we actually connect well with others during difficult circumstances and how <laughs> we probably shouldn't, right? Um, I really liked the, the ending portion of when someone shares something with us, we oftentimes try to um, respond to it, make it better, solve it, when really it, it doesn't have to be so complicated. We don't have to solve anything for anyone. You just have to, you just have to kind of be willing to, to listen and be there and, and um, just let the other person know that you're trying to understand even if it's difficult for you and that you're, you're there for them, even if that means just listening. So I just thought that was a great little video. Um, and we're going to, um, 
kick things off with a little mindfulness exercise. So if we go to the next slide, it's a very quick um, exercise. I'm just going to read this out for you. We're gonna kind of space things out. So this is called a mindful stop. And it's a very quick exercise. You can do it in as long or as um, short of a time frame that you want. You can take your time with each step if you would like to. Um, I like to practice this during um, moments where I kind of need a little breather, need to reset myself, but don't have a lot of time to do it because it's very quick but effective. So it's called a stop because of the steps. So the first one, we're gonna start with S, is to stand up or sit down. I'm going to be sitting for this one and breathe. So go ahead and take a moment to inhale very deeply. And let it out. And then feel your connection to the earth. So be aware of where your feet are sitting or standing on. What you are laying down on or sitting on. What your body's doing. So that goes into the T, tune into your body. So go ahead and lower your gaze or close your eyes if you feel comfortable doing so. Go ahead and scan your body and notice physical sensations and notice emotional sensations. Go ahead and discharge any unpleasant sensations, emotions or feelings on your out breaths, so your exhales. And notice any pleasant sensations that are going on for you right now. And let them in on your inhales and then let them fill you up. And again, if you feel any other negative sensations, just go ahead and exhale those. Now we're going to the O. Observe. So when you're ready, go ahead and lift your eyes. Open your eyes back up. Take in your surroundings. Go ahead and look around. If you're by a window, go ahead and look at that. Look at the outside. Observe something in your environment that is pleasant and be grateful for it and its beauty. And then finally, P possibility, ask yourself what is possible or what is new or what is a forward step from right now. So anytime you feel like you're having difficulty attuning with a moment, a situation, a person, I really encourage you to think of stop and remember S, stand up, T, tune into your body, O, observe, P, possibility. All right, um, let's go ahead to the next slide. All right, and now we're gonna do a really cool artist investigation, which Christine is going to lead. Um, and I'll just hand it off. So let's go ahead to the next slide and we can go ahead and play. Great, thank you so much to Tanya for that um, entry mindfulness exercise. The next step in our program is to take a little bit of a closer look at the focus artwork and the artist that created it. So for today's session of attunement, we are using this as our artwork of inspiration. It is a painting made by Elliot Green entitled Emergence 46 that was made using acrylic on canvas in 1993. We'll take a little bit of a closer look later on in our program, but let's dig in a little bit and see what we can find out about the artist. The artist's name is Elliot Green, and he is an American self-taught artist. He's known mostly for his paintings, and he was born not too far away. He's from Detroit, Michigan. He was born there in the 60s. He moved to New York City at the age of just 21 in 1981. In 1989, after working in New York City for about eight years, he finally got his big break. He had a debut exhibition at the Herschel and Alder Modern. Since then, 
He has been awarded with various grants and fellowships and artist residencies around the world. And I, in the research that I did, I know he speaks of his residency that he had in Italy and how impactful that was in changing his focus from his early work to the work that he's creating now. Very, very recently in late 2019, he uh, had a book of his paintings published. The book is called Elliot Green at the Far Edge of the Known World, and it includes essays by six different writers. It was published by Pierogi Gallery in New York City. If you want to see a little bit more about him or read a little bit more, check out that book. Because Green is a contemporary artist, we have the benefit of some recordings that he's done. He's done quite a few interviews and he makes these really cool time-lapse videos of his artistic process. So I thought it would be excellent to share these as we're thinking about our theme for today. And in this video, there's a kind of quote that really caught my eye and Tanya's eye, I know which is this idea of not knowing what will develop. He has a very intuitive process and he, in this video describes his decision-making and this editing process that he goes through and how it starts to be kind of unknown, right? The, the final version of the painting, he never could have envisioned. It's through this process of just seeing where his brain goes and editing and making decisions. And that so well relates to attunement and relationship building that you're constantly checking in, you're constantly going forward. So we will play this first pretty short video and then we'll look a little bit closer at some other artworks that we have of greens in our collection. <laughs> last 10 years I've had a, a more intuitive start I don't I don't know what the subject matter is going to be I just begin a painting moving my hands around I mean I just sort of feeling the space putting this energy and this sense of touch onto the surface of the canvas and that always leads to something to me that's the most fascinating part of it uh, it's like seeing what you think and I'm looking at the paint as it's coming right off the brush and I'm deciding if it has like a good character, if it has a freshness, if it's new to me. Um, uh, so that would, that would be something I would try and protect later, try and leave in and edit all around that or, and then go to another section and, and create a whole new colony of abstract shapes and then somehow connect that later to the first shapes. So there's a lot of editing and then there's a lot of generating of new images on top of something maybe that got knocked out. Fifteen years ago, I started making movies of how I make my work. Every pencil stroke is conceived almost in a, in a jazz-like way, right there, spontaneous, improvised. doing now is, is making my abstract landscapes and I'm doing it on a, t on a table. It's a stop action film. It's like, you know, when you dream just before you go to bed and just when you wake up and it's called hypnagogic. The particles in the darkness that turn into shapes that move around, they can be abstract, can be like asteroids. And it happens so quickly that you're like, I'm not thinking of this, I'm just watching this. It's seeing a person think. It's the seeing the inside of a head. And it's never a straight line if you're working in the same in this abstract process where you don't where you don't know what's gonna develop. These videos are so great. I wish all artists would make stop motion videos throughout their process so we could see each of the different stages of their art making. So we're very lucky to have that. Um, we are going to go to the next slide and take a little bit of a look at some of the other art objects that came into the collection at the same time as this Emergence 46. 
This and two more Elliot Green paintings were a gift of Peter Norton to the Hagerty in the year 2000. So we're always thankful and giving shout outs to our generous donors that helped to create the Hagerty's collection. So this other artwork is untitled. Oh, we have two untitled artworks from Elliot Green. So in the chat box, feel free to drop in titles for this painting and the next one that we'll look at if you have a, a inspiration that comes to mind. Um, much like our focus object for today, this a painting was also made with acrylic on canvas in 1990, and it is untitled number 104, which leads me to believe that there are quite a few untitled artworks by Elliot Green floating around. Um, the next artwork was made in 1995. So we have one from 1990, one from 1993, and this one from 1995. It's also made with acrylic paint, but it includes some collage and is painted on panel instead of on canvas. You can see the collage. There are some drawings that might look familiar, that style that was included in the video when he really started making those stop motion. And they're almost like cartoons, so I can see how that idea came to mind, but I love that he's continued to do it even with those kind of abstracted landscapes. If you have a title for this one, feel free to drop it in the chat. Um, because he's a contemporary artist, I thought it would be fun to take a look at some of the artworks that he is making now. We saw a few of them in that first video, but as a contemporary artist, he has a great website. So I am just gonna scroll down through this body of work called Continuous Motion, which is that um, the artworks featured in that stop motion video. So very clever title there um, that he made between 2018 and 2020. While I'm scrolling through, I'm just gonna read a little excerpt from a, a hyper allegetic article. Um, the author, John Wool described the work that Green made in the 80s and 90s in this article, and he writes, in the works done during the early phase of his career, the emphasis was on contour drawing and the paint was thinly applied, often in large flat areas. The interactions he depicted were often sexual and the humor often odd. The logic they followed was not immediately transparent to the viewer which suggested at the very least that they took place in a seemingly complete imagined world. The viewer was an unacknowledged witness, an outsider who was largely unnoticed. I just thought that was so poetic, um, but really does fit. And I think the, as you're looking at these more abstracted landscapes and the artworks that we have in our collection, you can kind of see how his focus started to shift from those line drawings into that paint and really creating these worlds. I think these are just so interesting. So I'd highly recommend heading over to his website if you want to see a few more of his works. Um, what we are going to do next is a little, um, a little bit more listening. We have another video where he speaks about the gestures. Um, we kind of saw his process in the last video and this idea of putting life into, putting energy and thought and, and how he speaks about it, capturing his mind's process of, of thinking is so interesting. So I want you to pay focus attention on the idea of intentionality and how that intentionality can transform the way in which we attune with one another. So he is kind of, attuning to his artwork. He's being open to his own kind of shifts of mood and thought. But I want you to keep in mind while we listen to this next short video where he describes his process and his gesture. This painting is called The Mattis. Mammatus is a type of cloud that looks like a mammary. I like this painting because there are all these different areas and times. I mean, if you look at it, it could almost be uh, summer, fall, spring. The first thing I think about this painting that's interesting is this uh, seems to me like uh, something I've seen on the Hudson River. But this uh, big swatch came around it's Bermuda. So now you have this, this watercolor that's Caribbean 
um, on top of the Hudson River, and it's setting up this time travel, uh, or, or both at once. It's a simultaneous location. This one has a lot of simultaneous locations because there's an indication of ice, and there's this mountain, there's grass on the top of the mountain and ice on the bottom of the mountain. Try and put life into every gesture. Um, I mean, a gesture is just a movement like this. A gesture is like saying, stop, come. There's this gesture, which sort of starts out maybe slow, and I'm contemplating what I'm going to do, and then it flies off. And when you get this, you always get this energy of the movement when the paint breaks up. I think of every shape, as abstract as it is, as having a mood, and within that mood having uh, an emotion, reacting to whatever's around it. They're abstractions, they just happen to be situated in a landscape type format. It doesn't represent a landscape that exists in the world. It's um, more uh, represents what goes on in a mind. That thinking through what goes on in the mind is so great. And with that in mind, I'm going to pass it over to Tanya for a meditation, speaking of what goes on in the mind. Thank you so much for learning about Elliot Green. Thanks, Tanya. Take it away. And Tanya, before we do that, I see Karen's hand up. So Karen, if you Tanya, wanted to for that um, entry mindfulness exercise, the next step in our program is to We'll pause, pause that. Thanks. <laughs> Technology hiccups. Thank you so much, um, Tanya, for that um, entry <laughs> mindfulness exercise. On repeat. <laughs> awesome. Karen, did you want to unmute yourself and ask your question? And if not, feel free to, oh, there, I see you, but you're still muted. You're halfway there. It was a mistake, sorry. Oh, no no worries, no worries. If anyone does have a question though, feel free to raise your hand or just drop it in the chat. <laughs> and you. Tanya, on to you. Yeah, thank you for that. Um, feel free to also drop any, um, any initial thoughts that you had about Elliot Green on to our chat. Um, I'd love to hear what you all think. Some things that kind of stuck out to me um, were, this idea that um, looking at these videos, these like movies of his process are like a gateway into someone's mind. And I, I liked that he referred to that as like, it's never a straight line, right? It's always um, moving, it's always curvy, pointy, all kinds of things. Um, it's just not straightforward. And I also liked the idea that you never know what will develop because it's the same with um, interactions with others, right? We, we never know what can happen once we meet someone. We don't know how important they will become to us later down the road. And we also don't, um, can't really expect relationships to go in a straight line, right? And relationships of any kind, romantic, work relationships, um, friendships, any kind are all, they go, all go through twists and turns. So I wanted to keep that in mind as we go into our meditation, it's really um, a meditation about compassion and keeping compassion for yourself, for others, for others whom you get along with and others whom getting along with is difficult for you. So let's go ahead and go to the next slide and press play. Please settle into a comfortable position and allow yourself to relax. Take a deep breath and release. For a few moments, just focus on your breath and clear your mind of worries. Notice when you are breathing in and breathing out. Let yourself experience and be aware of the sensations of breathing. Now picture someone who is close to you someone toward whom you feel a great amount of love. 
Notice how this love feels in your heart. Notice the sensations around your heart. Perhaps you feel a sensation of warmth, openness, and tenderness. Continue breathing and focus on these feelings as you visualize your loved one. As you breathe out, imagine that you are extending a golden light that holds your warm feelings from the center of your heart. Imagine that the golden light reaches out to your loved one, bringing them peace and happiness. At the same time, silently recite these phrases. May you have happiness. May you be free from suffering. May you experience joy and ease. May you have happiness. May you be free from suffering. May you experience joy and ease. As you silently repeat these phrases, remember to extend the golden light to your loved one from your heart. Feel with all your heart that you wish your loved one happiness and freedom from suffering. Now, think of a time when this person was suffering. Maybe they experienced an illness, an injury, or a difficult time in their life. Notice how you feel when you think of their suffering. How does your heart feel? Do the sensations change? Do you continue to feel warmth, openness, and tenderness? Are there other sensations, perhaps an aching sensation? Continue to visualize your loved one as you breathe. Imagine that you are extending the golden light from your heart to your loved one and that the golden light is easing their suffering. Extend this light out to them during your exhalation with the strong heartfelt wish that they be free from their suffering. Recite silently to them. May you be free from suffering. May you have joy and happiness. May you be free from the suffering. May you have joy and happiness. Notice how this feels in your heart. What happened to your heart? Did the sensations change? Did you continue to feel warmth, openness, and tenderness? Were there other sensations, an aching sensation perhaps? Did you have a wish to take away the other's suffering? Now, contemplate a time when you have suffered yourself. Perhaps you experienced a conflict with someone you care about or did not succeed in something you wanted or were physically ill. Notice how you feel when you think of your suffering. How does your heart feel? Do you continue to feel warmth, openness, and tenderness? Are there other sensations? Is there an aching sensation? Just as we wish for our loved one's suffering to end, We wish that our own suffering would end. We may also envision our own pain and suffering leaving us so that we may experience happiness. Continue to visualize yourself as you breathe. Imagine that the golden light emanating from your heart is easing your suffering. With each exhalation, feel the light emanating within you with the strong, heartfelt wish that you be free from your suffering. Silently recite to yourself, may I be free from suffering. May I have joy and happiness. May I be free from suffering. May I have joy and happiness. Again, Notice how this feels in your heart. 
What kind of sensations did you feel? Did they change from when you were envisioning your own suffering? How is this feeling different from when you wish your loved one's suffering to be relieved? Did you feel warmth or openness or tenderness? Were there other sensations such as pressure? Did you have a wish to take away your own suffering? Now, visualize someone with whom you have difficulty in your life. This may be a parent or child with whom you disagree, an ex-partner, a roommate with whom you had an argument, or a co-worker with whom you do not get along with. Although you may have negative feelings towards this person, think of how this person has suffered in their own life. This person has also had conflicts with loved ones, or has dealt with failures, or may have suffered illness. Think of a situation in which this person may have suffered. Notice your heart center. Does it feel different? Do you feel more warmth, openness, and tenderness? Are there other sensations, perhaps an aching sensation? How does your heart feel different when you are envisioning your own or loved one's suffering? Continue to visualize this person as you breathe. Imagine that you are extending the golden light from your heart to them and that the golden light is easing their suffering. Extend this light out to them during your exhalation with the strong heartfelt wish that they be free from suffering. See if this wish can be as strong as the wish for your own or a loved one's suffering to be relieved. Silently recite to them, may you be free from this suffering. May you have joy and happiness. May you be free from this suffering. May you have joy and happiness. If you have difficulty in wishing for this person's suffering to be relieved, you may think of a positive interaction you have had with this person that can help you in wishing them joy and happiness. Perhaps there were times when you got along, laughed together, or worked well together. Continue to silently recite. May you be free from this suffering. May you have joy and happiness. Take some time to bask in joy and happiness for loved ones, yourself, and others. And we will join back in a moment. Please settle into. So, thank you for joining us in that meditation. Um, I'd like to invite you all um, to unmute yourselves if you'd like to share something uh, that came up for you or your experience in that um, meditation, or feel free to drop it in the chat if you feel more comfortable with that. I can go first to just to demonstrate. Um, I, I find myself that the most difficult. Part of that meditation was um, compassion for myself. I felt like I was um, getting distracted during that portion with my thoughts. And I don't know if that was me intentionally trying not to think about it or not, but I thought that was interesting that the other two sections came a little bit easier for me. Um, 
So that's just me, but I, I invite um, you all to, to share if you'd like. All right, well, I, I will allow, <laughs> I'll, I'll let you guys just um, share whenever you're ready if you want to, and we'll keep going. Um, so for our next section, we are going to be making a little bit of art and I'm going to turn my other camera on. So you should be able to see on the screen that says art, you should be able to see my notebook. I'm not really seeing it on the screen, let's see. Uh, oh, there we go. All right, so it should be all good to go. So if we could go to the next slide. All right, so for this art making portion, um, we are going to be using the strategy we used early on in this event, our mindful stop strategy. So we're going to be making art on um, one of two um, of the steps. So it's really up to you. You can either choose to depict your observe step or your possibility step. So let's go to the next slide. So if you can recall um, to this meditation that we just did, um, our compassion meditation, think about what was bringing up for you and feel free to depict um, what you were observing in your mind as you were going through this meditation um, and what you um, witnessed about that or if some possibilities came up for you for, for me I definitely thought of some possibilities for like the the part of the meditation that was compassion for others that I may not get along with um, so I might choose to focus on that one for myself um, but really, uh, you can choose either one of them and whatever, in whatever form or shape that takes, that is totally okay. So let's go ahead and take about mm, five to eight minutes. Uh, let's see, let's feel it out and just create some art. You can go ahead and look at my screen if you'd like to as I'm creating or just focus on your own and I'll meet you back in a little bit. I'll cut you down every few minutes. And feel free to ask me any questions if anyone has one.
It's been about two minutes. Let's take about five more. So let's take about three more minutes and then we'll um, all group back. Let's take these final 30 seconds to just kind of finish off where you're at. These don't have to be finished by any means. You can always work them more later on.
All right, let's go ahead and group back together and I will turn off this screen. I'd like to invite you all to um, go ahead and share your, um, your artworks. If you are comfortable with that, you could just put them up to the, um, the camera. Um, and I'm going to do that myself. So go ahead and do that whenever you're ready. I'd also like to invite you to share anything that came up for you or describe your artworks in the chat, maybe what colors you utilized, what kinds of lines you utilized. Thank you, I see someone sharing. Thank you so much, Tanya. That looks great. Anybody else? Lee, can you move yours over? Oh, I see you're messing with your camera so we can see it. I can see just the corner of it and I want to see more. Anybody else? All right. Well, thank you for sharing with us. That was great. <laughs> I love seeing your, yours. Um, we can go ahead to the next slide. All right. So we're going to go um, to our final activity, which is a close looking activity. So we're going to look at the artwork that we are focusing on for this um, event, also made by Elliot Green. Um, so let's go ahead and um, to the next slide. So what we're going to be doing for this activity is we are going to do a quick look of the artwork. We're going to take about 30 seconds and um, slideshow moderator, Rachel, if you could, as soon as I say um, um, next slide, please go ahead and click it so that we can stop looking at it for a second and, and pause. So we're going to look at it for 30 seconds, get our first impressions, and then we're going to look at it again with you know closer closer look because we're going to be looking at it for a longer period of time and we're just going to ask some follow-up questions of what you noticed um, after the initial impressions so if everyone's ready let's go ahead and look at it really quick take it in Emergence 46 by Elliot Green. Acrylic on canvas made in 1993. And Rachel, you can go to the next slide, number 19. All right, now is when I'm inviting you all. You can unmute yourselves, use the chat, whatever you feel comfortable with. But I want to hear from you guys. What are your initial thoughts? What did you notice about this artwork? And it can be about the colors, the characters you saw, the painting itself, anything. There's no wrong answers. The leg. <laughs> How bent out of shape you <laughs> Yeah, the leg was pretty cool. I actually more so noticed the foot that was like standing up. Cartoonish and a tad unselling, okay. Any other initial thoughts? The grayish figure emerging in the background, stretching expressions. Yeah, the characters look like they, they could really extend themselves. Whirlwind in the background. Oh, I didn't notice that. Any other ones? All right, these are great. All right, now we're going to, oh, the cloud in the background, things coming out of, char out of characters. All right, so now we're going to look at the artwork for a little longer. So let's go ahead to the next slide. All right, 
go ahead and really take it in. Now I'm noticing the whirlwind. Thank you for that. Try to pay attention to parts of the artwork that maybe you didn't look at last time around. I encourage you all to look at the particular colors in this artwork, the particular shapes, the way things are placed in this artwork, the way they're depicted, what you think they might be and why you think they're there. Take about 30 more seconds in on this. I'm hanging out. <laughs> okay, now let's go to the next slide. I'm gonna stop, stop your close looking. So I wanna um, ask what was different about the artwork this time around? What did you notice about it this time around? And how did spending more time on it change the way you saw it? So I encourage you to drop any new findings that you didn't see the first time around and why you think you might have not seen that or why it stood out to you this time around. More details, the red nose, yep. Two-sided face, a pacifier in the ear. Oh yeah, I did notice something like that in the ear. The, the character on the right has two faces, one smoking. You know what? I am actually going to, let's go back to the artwork. I, I kind of want to compare <laughs> with the chat. Potential connections between all the different parts. Yes, I was actually going to ask how might this artwork um, really back to attunement. So I wanted to do a follow-up question of how do you think the characters in this artwork are attuning to each other? And then I have one more question after this. The movement towards each other, two different stanzas. Yeah, I, I kind of agree with Lee. I, I feel like the, the character on the right is kind of moving towards the other character, whereas the one on the left I'm not quite sure of because they're leaning back, but their their leg seems like it's pushing them forward. So I'm interested about that. Yeah, it is a good catch. Any other ways that they might be attuning to each other, especially considering that it looks like there's a tornado in the background. <laughs> All right, well, while you all consider that question, I wanna ask a follow-up question. How do you think the artist was attuning to the artwork as they were making it? And I wanna refer back to the comment that he said about um, something along the lines of you, you never know where it's going to take you, right? Is he pushing the button on the tornado? Oh, that's a good question. Did they make the tornado happen? So what kinds of things do you think the artist Elliot Green was thinking about as he made it, as he made this artwork? The emerging idea makes me wonder about the bird slash man combination. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and I had a notice until someone mentioned that, that that character has like two faces. Any other comments? The artwork is speaking with differences in people. Could be. Yeah, the, the two characters look very different to each other. So that very well could be. Interesting, I saw the cloud as an atomic bomb cloud. That's very interesting interpretation too. Thinking about what um, Green might've been thinking about as they made this. Well, thank you for your, um, your thoughts.
and your interpretations. Um, we are going to go to our very last portion in which we're gonna listen to a short poem. So let's go to the next slide and the next one. If you can keep your head when all about you are losing theirs and blaming it on you. If you can trust yourself when all men doubt you, but make allowances for their doubting too. If you can wait and not be tired by waiting, or being lied about, don't deal in lies. Or being hated, don't give way to hating. And yet, don't look too good nor look too wise. If you can dream and not make dreams your master, if you can think and not make thoughts your aim, if you can meet with triumph and disaster and treat those two impostors just the same, if you can hear the truth you've spoken twisted by knaves to make a trap for fools, or watch the things you gave your life for broken and stoop and build them up with worn out tools. If you can make one heap of all your winnings and risk it on one turn of pitch and toss and lose and start again at the beginning and never breathe a word about your loss. If you can force your heart and nerve and sinew to serve your turn long after they are done and so hold on when there is nothing in you except the will which says to them hold on if you can talk with crowds and keep your virtue or walk with kings nor lose the common touch if neither foes nor loving friends can hurt you if all men count with you but not too much if you can fill the unforgiving minute with 40 seconds worth of distance run yours is the earth and everything that's in it and which is more you'll be a man my son thank you for that and we'll just send you all off with a little call to action. So let's go to the next slide. Um, so thank you, thank you, thank you for joining us on this event of about attunement. Um, we'd like you all to make sure to watch our previous Mindful Moments with Art, which have been about empathy and about releasing judgment. And we also like to invite you to tune in on May 18th for our final episode of this Mindful Moments with Art series. And this one we're going to be discussing, so staying present or being present and how we tune out the, you know, quote unquote, noise of everyday life to fully live in the here and now and be present. So please join us then. We thank you so much for joining us today and I hope you all have a, a great one. Thank you, thank you, thank you.